Manuel Car Sentido Pinto de Oliveira GCSE, GCIH is a Portuguese film director and screenwriter born in Sidofita, Porto. He first began making films in 1927, when he and some friends attempted to make a film about World War I. In 1931 he completed his first film Doro, Fena Fluvial, a documentary about his home city Porto made in the city symphony genre. He made his feature film debut in 1942 with Enki Bar Cubed BA Cubed and continued to make shorts and documentaries for the next 30 years, gaining a minimal amount of recognition without being considered a major world film director. Among the numerous factors that prevented Oliveira from making more films during this time period were the political situation in Portugal, family obligations and money. In 1971 Oliveira made his second feature narrative film Past and Present, a social satire that both set the standard for his film career afterwards and gained him recognition in the global film community. He continued making films of growing ambition throughout the 1970s and 1980s, gaining critical acclaim and numerous awards. Since the late 1980s he had been one of the most prolific working film directors and continues to make an average of one film per year past the age of 100. In March 2008 he was reported to be the oldest active film director in the world, and is possibly the second oldest film director ever after George Abbott, who lived to be 107. He is also the only filmmaker whose active career has spanned from the silent era to the digital age. Among his numerous awards are two career Golden Lions from the Venice Film Festival. Early life, Manuel de Oliveira was born in Porto, Portugal, on December 11, 1908, to Francisco José Copyright de Oliveira and Carcente de Ferreira Pinto. His family were wealthy industrialists and agricultural landowners. His father owned a dry goods factory produced the first electric light bulbs in Portugal and built an electric energy plant before he died in 1932. Oliveira was educated at the Colegio Universal in Porto before attending a Jesuit boarding school in Galicia, Spain. As a teenager his goal was to become an actor. At 17, he joined his brothers as an executive in his father's factories, where he remained for the majority of his adult life when not making films. In a 1981 Sight and Sound article, John Gillett describes Oliveira as having spent most of his life in business, uh, making films only when circumstances allowed. From an early age, Oliveira was interested in the poverty of the lower classes, the arts and especially films. While he has named D.W. Griffith, Eric von Stroheim, Charlie Chaplin, Max Linder, Carl Dreyer's The Passion of Joan of Arc and Sergei Eisenstein's The General Line as early influences, he was also disappointed to have virtually no Portuguese filmmakers to emulate. The Portuguese film industry was also highly censored and restricted under the fascist Salazar regime that lasted from the early 1930s until the mid-1970s. His later films, such as The Cannibals and Bell Taujos, suggest an affinity with Spanish filmmaker Luis Buar plus or minus well. He has stated I'm closer to Buar plus or minus well. He's a reverse Catholic and I was raised a Catholic. It's a religion that permits sin, and Buar plus or minus well at the very deepest is one of the most moralistic directors but he does everything to the contrary. I never say that I'm Catholic because to be Catholic is very difficult. I prefer to be thought of as a great sinner. Film career, 1927 a year 1942, early documentaries and first feature, his first attempt at filmmaking was in 1927 when he and his friends worked on a film about the Portuguese experience in World War I, although the film was never made. He enrolled in Italian filmmaker Reno Lupo's acting school at age 20 and appeared as an extra in Lupo's film Fatima Milagrosa. Years later in 1933 he also had the distinction of having acted in the second Portuguese sound film, A Carna Picavolt Poundo de Lisbo. Eventually Oliveira turned his attention back to filmmaking when he saw Walther Ruttmann's documentary Berlin, Symphony of a City. Ruttmann's film is the most famous of a small, short-lived silent documentary film genre, City Symphony Films. These films portray the life of a city, mainly through visual impressions in a semi-documentary style, without the narrative content of more mainstream films, 
though the sequencing of events can imply a kind of loose theme or impression of the city's daily life. Other examples include Alberto Cavalcanti's Rihanna K. Lehers and Zig Avertov's Man with a Movie Camera. Oliveira has said that Rutman's film was his most useful lesson in film technique, but that he also found it cold, mechanical and lacking humanity. The discovery of Rutman's film prompted Oliveira to direct his own first film in 1931, a documentary short titled Doro, Fena Fluvial. The film is a portrait of his hometown Porto and the labor and industry that takes place along the city's main river, the Douro River. Reno Lupo invited Oliveira to show the film at the International Congress of Film Critics in Lisbon, where the majority of the Portuguese audience booed. However other foreign critics and artists who were in attendance praised the film, such as Luigi Pirandello and a Pamel Malviola Moz. Oliveira re-edited the film with a new soundtrack and re-released it in 1934. And again in 1994, Oliveira modified the film by adding a new, more avant-garde soundtrack by Freitas Branco. Over the next ten years Oliveira struggled to make films, abandoning several ambitious projects and making a handful of short documentaries on subjects ranging from artistic portraits of coastal cities in Portugal to industrial films on the origins of Portugal's auto industry. One of these shorts was a documentary about the inauguration of the hydroelectrical plant that his father built, Hula Branca. He also first met and befriended Portuguese playwright Josa Copyright Ra Copyright Jaya during this time period. Oliveira would go on to adapt four of Ra Copyright Jaya's plays as films. Fifteen years after his first attempt at filmmaking, Oliveira made his feature film debut in 1942. Enki Bar Cubed B.A. Cubed is a portrait of Porto's street children and based on a short story by Rodrigo de Freitas. Oliveira used non-professional actors to portray the children. The story centers around two young boys who compete for the attention of a young girl. One of the boys is an extroverted bully, while the other is shy and innocent. The film was a commercial failure when it opened, and its merit only came to be recognized over time. Oliveira has stated that he was criticized for portraying children that lied, cheated and stole, which in his mind made them act more like adults. The poor reception of the film forced Manuel de Oliveira to abandon other film projects he was involved in, and to dedicate himself to a vineyard that his wife had inherited. In the early 1950s he and playwright Josa Copyright Ra Copyright Jaya attempted to submit a screenplay to the Estado Novo Run Film Fund Commission, but the commission refused to either accept or reject the film. Oliveira attributed this to his own well-known dislike for the Salazar regime. 1955 A Euro 1970, Return to Filmmaking, in 1955 Oliveira traveled to Germany to study new techniques in color cinematography. He re-emerged onto the film scene in 1956 with The Artist and the City, a 26-minute documentary short film shot in color. Much like his first film, The Artist and the City is a portrait of Porto, juxtaposing color shots of the city with paintings being created by local artist Anticube Naya Cruz. The film was shown in a number of festivals to positive reviews. In 1959, Portugal's National Federation of Industrial Millers commissioned O Par Poundo, a color documentary on Portugal's bread industry. In 1963, Rite of Spring, a partly documentary, partly narrative film depicting an annual passion play, marked a turning point for his career. The play is based on a 16th-century passion play by Francisco Vaz de Guimarães and was actually performed by villagers in northern Portugal. Along with the performance of the play, Oliveira staged the actors' rehearsals, spectators watching the actors and even himself and his crew preparing to film the performance. Oliveira has said that making the film profoundly altered his conception of cinema as a tool not to simulate reality but merely represent it. O Acto de Primavera was called the first political film from Portugal by film critic Henrique Costa and gave Oliveira his first worldwide recognition as a filmmaker. The film won the Grand Prix at the Siena Film Festival and Oliveira had his first film retrospective at the Locarno Film Festival in 1964. This was shortly followed by The Hunt, a grim, surrealistic short narrative film that contrasted with the positive tones of his previous film. Due to censorship issues, 
Oliveira was forced to add a happy ending to the initial release of the film and was unable to restore his original ending until 1988. Because of this film and anti Salazar comments Oliveira made after a screening of O Acto de Primavera, he was arrested by the PIDE in 1963. He spent 10 days in jail and was interrogated until finally being released with the help of his friend Manuel Meniers. His career again slowed down and he only completed two short documentaries in the next nine years. In 1967, the Sinclube do Porto sponsored a week of Portuguese cinema, where many filmmakers from the blossoming Cinema Novo movement screened films and discussed the precarious situation of Portuguese cinema in the marketplace, and the decline of the film club movement. This resulted in the Caluste Gulbenkian Foundation's creation of the Centro Portugues de Cinema, which would help to finance and distribute films in Portugal. The first film that the foundation chose to sponsor was Oliveira's next feature, and the early 1970s would come to be known as the Gulbenkian Years of Portuguese Cinema. 1970 Euro 1989, Artistic Breakthrough, Tetralogy of Frustrated Love and Recognition, since the 1970s, Oliveira has been at his most active, with the vast majority of his films having been made after his 75th birthday. Whether a late bloomer or a victim of unfortunate delays and political censorship, he has become Portugal's preeminent filmmaker during the later part of his long life. Film critic Jay Hoberman has said at an age when many men think of retirement, Oliveira emerged from obscurity as one of the 70s leading modernists, a peer of Straub, Sibberberg and Duras. With a newfound artistic freedom after Anticube Nio de Oliveira Salazar's stroke in 1968 and the April 1974 Carnation Revolution, Oliveira's career began to flourish and receive international acclaim. Ironically the Carnation Revolution also resulted in his family's factories being occupied by factions of the left and subsequently going bankrupt. Due to this, Oliveira lost most of his personal wealth and his home of 35 years. Oliveira's second return to filmmaking came in 1971 with Past and Present, a satirical black comedy on marriage and the bourgeoisie. With its lyrical surrealism and farcical situations, the film was a shift from his earlier work about lower-class people. Based on a play by Jai Cesar Montero, the film stars Maria de Cesset as Vanda, a woman who only falls in love with her husbands after they have died. Past and Present was the first of what has become known as Oliveira's Tetralogy of Frustrated Loves. It was followed by Benilda or the Virgin Mother, Doomed Love and Francisca. Each of these films share the theme of unfulfilled love, the backdrop of a repressive society, and the beginning of Oliveira's unique cinematic style. Benilda or the Virgin Mother was based on a play by Oliveira's longtime friend and fellow Salazar regime dissident Josa Copyright Ra Copyright Gio and released in 1975. This would be the first of many films that would examine the relationship between film and theatre in Oliveira's work, and the film opens with roaming exterior shots of the Tobis studios in Lisbon until reaching the constructed set of the film. In the film Benilda is a sleepwalking 18-year-old who mysteriously becomes impregnated and believes herself to have been chosen for immaculate conception, despite the angry and dismissive reactions of her bourgeoisie family and friends. Upon its release, the film was criticized for being irrelevant to the political climate of 1975 Portugal. However Oliveira defended its depiction of a moralistic and social repression on its characters as not being in opposition to or in contradiction with our own times. Doomed Love is a tragic love story based on the novel by Camilo Castelo Branco. The film depicts the doomed love affair of Teresa and Simor, who come from two rival wealthy families. Teresa is sent to a convent for refusing to marry her cousin Baltazar, and after Simor kills Baltazar he is sentenced to death and eventually sent into exile. Teresa dies after Simor is sent away, and Simor dies at sea. Oliveira made two versions of the film, a six-part television miniseries that was broadcast in 1978 to disastrous reviews, and a shorter theatrical film released in 1979, which received rave reviews and was profiled on the cover of Le Monde. Oliveira has stated that whereas most film adaptations of literature attempt to adapt the narrative to film, he wanted instead to adapt the text of Branco's novel, 
Much like Jean Marie Straub and Daniel Hurlitz, The Chronicle of Anna Magdalena Bach was a film more about music itself than about its own story. He has stated that in a novel where a lot happens, it would be a waste of time to show everything. Besides, the literary narration, the way of telling the story, the style, the sonorousness of the phrases, and the composition are all just as beautiful and interesting as the events that unfold. Therefore, it seemed convenient for me to focus on the text, and that is what I did. A film achieves this idea by including extensive narration, characters that speak their thoughts or read letters aloud and shots of written text. In 1981 Oliveira made Francisca, based on the novel by Agostina Bessa Lewis. The film is a tragic love triangle detailing a real-life relationship between Fanny Owen, Ama de Podia Picavolt Pound O author Camilo Castelo Branco and Branco's best friend Jose Augusto. Oliveira's wife was a distant relative of Owen and had access to private letters written by all three protagonists in the film. The film was screened to great acclaim at the director's fortnight at the 1981 Cannes Film Festival and furthered Oliveira's global recognition. In addition to Francisca, Oliveira has adapted six other novels or stories from author Augustina Bessa Lewis, as well as collaborated on the screenplay for the documentary Visitor Mama Cubed Reals e Confissa Micronis. This was also the first film which Oliveira made with producer Paulo Branco, who would go on to produce the majority of Oliveira's film, and with actor Diogo da Cubed Rear. Following the success of Francisca, Oliveira made three documentary films. Visitor Mama Cubed Reals e Confissa Micronis is an autobiographical documentary about Oliveira's family history. After completing the film, he decided that it will not be released until after his death. He then made Lispo Cultural in Nice. A Euro Propos de Jean Virgo, a documentary for French television on the city of Nice, and also a tribute to French filmmaker Jean Virgo. Oliveira then made his most ambitious film to that date, The Satin Slipper based on the notorious 1929 epic play by Paul Claudel, which is rarely performed in its entirety due to its length. The seven-hour film took Oliveira two years to complete. It was Oliveira's first film in French, as well as his first film with actor Louis Miguel Sintra, who would go on to act in all of his films from then on. The story of the satin slipper is about the unrequited love of 16th-century conquistador Don Rodrigo noblewoman Donia Prouhis with the backdrop of colonialism in Africa and the Americas. The film opens with a the theatre gradually being filled with an audience and an introduction to the film on stage. The film itself uses very theatrical set pieces, such as cardboard waves and backdrops. The film was never released theatrically but was screened at both the 1985 Cannes Film Festival and the 1985 Venice Film Festival, where Oliveira received a special Golden Lion for his career up to that point. Later the Brussels Cinematheque awarded the film its Leic Prize. In 1986 Oliveira made one of his most experimental films, My Case, partially based on Joza copyright Ra copyright Gio's one-act play O Mu Caso. Although the film also takes inspiration from Samuel Beckett's Fizzles and the Book of Job, Oliveira takes a surreal and meta narrative approach to examine the relationship between art and life. A film begins with a the theater being filled with the audience and actors before a play is about to begin. A mysterious man, played by Luis Miguel Sintra, enters the stage and presents his case about the fallacies of theater and its illusions. One by one all of the play's actors and technicians state their cases about what bothers them about the play and its relation to their own lives. An audience member then takes the stage to make a case for what the collective audience wants. This is followed by three consecutive but very different versions of the one-act play. The first is a straightforward farce, the second is presented as a slapstick silent movie, and the third is performed with the dialogue read backwards. The stage performance ends with video footage of war and disasters from around the world and Pablo Picasso's painting Guernica. The entire film then shifts to a retelling of the Book of Job, with Sintra as Job and Bulladia as his wife. This sequence ends with a close-up of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. My Case opened the 1986 Venice Film Festival and was released in 1987. Oliveira next made a satirical film in the tradition of Louis Buar plus or minus well, The Cannibals in 1988. 
The film is based on a short story by Elviero Carvalho and stars Luis Miguel Sintra, Leonor Silvera and Diogo da Cube Drea. Jose copyright Ra copyright Gio first showed Oliveira the little-known story, and Oliveira decided to make the film his only opera in collaboration with composer Joy Paris. A film also contains a demonic narrator Nicola who appears and disappears from scenes magically. In the film, the beautiful young Margarita falls in love with the mysterious Viscount of Avalida, while rejecting the advances of the notorious Don Joe Poundo. On their wedding night, the Viscount reveals to Margarida that his great mystery is that he has no arms or legs and is a living corpse. Margarida throws herself out of their bedroom window in horror and the Viscount attempts to drink poison but rolls into the fireplace instead, singing an aria as he burns to death. Just then Don Joe Pando enters intending to murder the Viscount in jealously and witnesses the Viscount's death. The next morning, Margarida's father, brothers and family magistrate wake up and want to be served breakfast, but find an empty house. They look for the Viscount but only discover a strange meat cooking in the fireplace, and conclude that it is a strange delicacy being prepared for them. The four men unknowingly eat the Viscount's body for breakfast with great delight. Suddenly they hear a gunshot and rush to the garden where they find Margarida's dead body and Don Joe Poundo sitting next to her with a self-inflicted gunshot wound in his chest. As Don Joe Poundo dies, he explains everything that has happened to the family and tells them they can find the Viscount in the fireplace. Horrified at their own cannibalism, the father and brothers decide to commit suicide until the magistrate points out that they are now the sole heirs to the Viscount's fortune. The father and brothers decide to live, and turn into rapid dogs and eat the magistrate, who has turned into a pig. The Cannibals were screened in competition at the 1988 Cannes Film Festival and won the Critics Special Award at the 1988 Tsar Poundo Paulo International Film Festival. 1990 A Euro Present, continued success as a filmmaker, Oliveira's work since the 1990s has been the most prolific of his entire career and he has made at least one film a year between 1990 and 2012. During this period he established and consistently worked with a loyal troupe of regular actors including Luis Miguel Sintra, Leonor Baldic, Ricardo Trapa, Leonor Silvera, Diogo da Cubria, John Malkovich, Catherine Deneuve and Michel Piccoli. He would also work with such international stars as Jeanne Moreau, Irene Puppers, Bulugia, Chira Mastrani, and Marcelo Mastrani in the actor's last film. In 1990 Oliveira made No, or The Vain Glory of Command, starring Luis Miguel Sintra, Diogo da Cube Drea and Leonor Silvera. The film depicts the military history of Portugal, focusing on its defeats more than its victories. The historical action include the assassination of Viriathus, the Battle of Toro, the Battle of Alcachequipa and the more recent Portuguese colonial war. The one exception is the sequence that depicts the mythical Isle of Love, which celebrates Portuguese explorers and discoverers, not its military figures. The Isle of Love includes winged cupids, beautiful nymphs and the goddess Venus. The film was shown in competition at the 1990 Cannes Film Festival. Oliveira then made The Divine Comedy in 1991. Set in a mental institution, the film is not an adaptation of Dante Alighieri's famous work but is derived from stories in the Bible. Joza copyright Ra copyright Gio's play A Salvacau do Mundu, Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and the Brothers Karamazov, and Friedrich Nietzsche's Antichrist. Oliveira has stated that all of the texts he uses deal in some way with the problem of sin and the possibility of redemption, and in this sense they all derive ultimately from the same source. The film stars Maria de Medeiros, Miguel Golem, Luis Miguel Sintra, Leonor Silvera and Diogo da Cubria and was shown in competition at the 1991 Venice Film Festival, where it won the Grand Special Jury Prize Award. Oliveira then returned to the works of Portuguese writer Camilo Castelo Branco with Day of Despair in 1992. The film stars Mario Barroso as Branco, with actors Teresa Madruga, Luis Miguel Sintra and Diogo da Cubria playing both themselves and Ana Placido, Freitas Fortuna and Dr. Edmundo Magla Poundis, respectively. 
the film was shot in the same house that Branco lived his final years and committed suicide and is both a documentary and a narrative film about the famous Portuguese writer. In 1993 Oliveira made Abraham's Valley, based on the novel by Agostina Bessela S. Oliveira had wanted to film Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary, but was dissuaded by producer Paulo Branco due to budgetary restraints. Oliveira then suggested to Bessela S that she write an updated version of the novel set in Portugal, which resulted in the novel in 1991. Abraham's Valley is not a retelling of the Flaubert book, however Madame Bovary is both a subtext and a physical presence in the film. The film stars Leonor Silveira as Ima, a discontent Portuguese woman who wants a passionate life like the one she reads about in Flaubert's novel. Like Madame Bovary, Ima marries a doctor that she does not love and has many extramarital affairs before dying in an accident that may or may not be a suicide. Unlike Madame Bovary, there is no scandal in her love affairs, which are simply accepted by both her husband and the society that she lives in. The film won the Critics Award at the 1993 Sao Paulo Paulo International Film Festival, as well as an award for Best Artistic Contribution Award at the 1993 Tokyo International Film Festival. In 1994 Oliveira made The Box, based on a play by Helder Presta Montero. The film stars Luis Miguel Sintra as a blind homeless man whose only means of support in a poor neighborhood in Lisbon is his official, government-issued arms box. It was screened in competition at the 1994 Tokyo International Film Festival. In 1995 Oliveira's reputation had grown and his films were internationally acclaimed. That year he made his first of many films starring international movie stars, The Convent, starring John Malkovich and Catherine Deneuve. The film is based on the novel As Terrors Do Risco by Agostina Bessela S and examines the Faustian theme of good versus evil. In the film Malkovich plays an American writer who travels to Portugal with his wife to research his theory that William Shakespeare was really Jacques Perez, a Jewish Spaniard who fled his native country to avoid the Spanish Inquisition. The couple stay in a monastery or with strange, demonic-looking staff and they eventually end up having affairs with two staff members. The film was screened in competition at the 1995 Cannes Film Festival and won the prize of the Catalan Screenwriters Critic and Writers Association at the 1995 Sitges, Catalonian International Film Festival. In 1996 Oliveira worked with French star Michel Piccoli and Greek film star Irene Puppers in Party. The film was co-written by Oliveira and Agustina Bessela S from an original idea by Oliveira. In the film, a married couple played by Leonor Silveira and rogue copyright Rio Simura have a dinner party that includes a famous Greek actress and her lover and a film consists of conversations between these four characters at parties over the course of five years. The film was screened in competition at the 1996 Venice Film Festival and won Oliveira the award for Best Director at the 1996 Portuguese Golden Globe Awards. In 1997 Oliveira made Voyage to the Beginning of the World, which was the final film of Italian film star Marcello Mastrani. In the film Mastrani plays an aging film director named Manuel who travels on a road trip across northern Portugal with French film actor Afonso and two other young companions, Judite and Dort. Afonso wants to see the Portuguese village that his father grew up in and see the relatives that he has never met. On the way. Manuel stops at several locations on the road that he remembers from his childhood, only to find them much different than he had remembered. The film is autobiographical in that the locations on the road are real locations from Oliveira's childhood. The film is also based on the experiences of actor Eva Fonso, whose father had immigrated from Portugal to France and who had met his long-lost relatives during a French-Portuguese co-production in 1987. The film was screened out of competition at the 1997 Cannes Film Festival and won the Fapresi Prize and a special mention from the Ecumenical Jury. It won other awards at the 1997 Haifa International Film Festival and the 1997 Tokyo International Film Festival. Oliveira then made Anxiety in 1998. The episodic film contains three short films based on literary works by Helder Presta Montero, Anticube Niopatra Caio and Agustina Bessela S. 
In Ozimate a 90-year-old man concludes that old age is horrible and attempts to convince his middle-aged son to commit suicide. In Susie, an aristocrat is in an affair with a beautiful young cocot, but social class differences prevent him from having a deep, meaningful relationship with her. In Ma Poundi de um Rio, Leonor Balde plays a discontent small-town girl who yearns for a more exotic life and seek advice from the mother of the river. The film won Oliveira another award for Best Director at the 1998 Portuguese Golden Globe Awards. In 1999 Oliveira made The Letter, based on the 17th-century French novel The Princess of Cleves by Madame de Lafayette. Oliveira had wanted to make a film from the novel since the late 1970s, but had initially thought that it was too complicated to be filmed. The film updates the novel to modern day and stars Chira Mastrani as Catherine de Claves, Antoine Chappie is the husband that she does not love, Leonor Silveira is her childhood friend who has become a nun and her confidant, and Portuguese rock star Pedro Abrão Rosa playing himself in the role of the dashing Duke of Nemours, whom Catherine is in love with. Abrão Rosa also wrote some original songs for the film. The film won the Grand Jury Prize at the 1999 Cannes Film Festival. In 2000 Oliveira made the film Word and Utopia a biography of the Portuguese Jesuit priest Padre Anticube Nio Vieira based upon letters and sermons that the priest wrote between 1626 and 1695. Vieira is played by Oliveira's grandson Ricardo Trapa as a young man, Luis Miguel Sintra in middle age and Lima de Hort as an old man. The film chronicles Vieira's missionary work in South America testimony before the Spanish Inquisition and work as a trusted advisor to Queen Christina of Sweden. The film was shown in competition at the 2000 Venice Film Festival, where it won the film critical Barstone Bianco Award. It also won Oliveira his third award for Best Director at the 2000 Portuguese Golden Globe Awards. In 2001 Oliveira made two feature films at the age of 92. I'm Going Home stars Michelle Piccoli as Gilbert Valence, an aging stage actor that never achieved great success who deals with the sudden deaths of his wife daughter and son-in-law after a car accident, turning down undignified roles in commercial TV shows and raising his nine-year-old grandson. Catherine Deneuve, John Malkovich, Antoine Chappie, Leonor Boldake, Leonor Silvera and Ricardo Trapa also co-star. The film was shown in competition at the 2001 Cannes Film Festival, won awards at the Haifa International Film Festival and the Tsar Pound Paulo International Film Festival and won the award for Best Film at the 2001 Portuguese Golden Globe Awards. Later that year Oliveira made the autobiographical, partially documentary film Porto of My Childhood. The film includes archival footage of Doro, Faina Fluvial and Enki Bar Cubed BA Cubed, reenactments of parts of Oliveira's childhood and documentary footage of Porto in the early 20th century. Oliveira's grandsons Jorge Trapa and Ricardo Trapa portray Oliveira at different ages of his life. The film was screened in competition at the 2001 Venice Film Festival, where it won the UNESCO Award. Oliveira made The Uncertainty Principle in 2002. The film is based on the 2001 novel O Principio da Incertiza, Joida Familia by Agostina Bessalua S which won the grand prize from the Portuguese Writers' Association. In the film, Leonor Balde plays Camila, who marries a man to help alleviate her family's financial difficulties instead of her boyfriend. Camila's husband begins an affair with Vanessa, which Camila is indifferent about. This infuriates Vanessa who proceeds to do everything she can to make Camila suffer. In then end Vanessa and Camila's husband become involved with an illegal deal with some gangsters, which Kamala refuses to help them with. The film was screened in competition at the 2002 Cannes Film Festival. This was followed by A Talking Picture, starring Leonor Silvera, Philippa Diomeda, Catherine Deneuve, John Malkovich, Irene Puppers and Stefania Sandrelli in 2003. In the film Silvera takes her young daughter on a cruise to Bombay to meet her father's family and teaches her about the history of the places that they pass through along the way. These sites include such places as Ceuta, Marseille, Athens, Naples and Pompeii.
they also meet and learn about three successful women from certain location and have long conversations with the ship's captain, often dealing with the conflicts between Christianity and Islam. The film was screened in competition at the 2003 Venice Film Festival, where it won the Cygnus Award. In 2004 Oliveira made The Fifth Empire, a highly political film based on the play El Rey Sebastião by Josa Copyright Ra Copyright Gio. The film chronicles the history of King Sebastian I of Portugal, and at a screening at the 2004 Venice Film Festival Oliveira acknowledged that U.S. President George W. Bush had a Sebastianist inclination in his expressed desire to spread democracy and freedom around the globe in his own version of the Fifth Empire. In the film King Sebastian contemplates pursuing his crusade in the Middle East that would lead to the Battle of Alcachequipa and the counsel that he seeks from a variety of advisors friends and family members. A film portrays King Sebastian as obsessed with his place in history and with his own myth of himself, while creating violent situations all around him. The film was screened at Venice out of competition as part of Oliveira's career Golden Lion Award. Oliveira followed this film with Magic Mirror in 2005. Based on the novel A Alma dos Ricos by Agostina Bessalua S., the film stars Leonor Silvera. Ricardo Trapa, Luis Miguel Sintra, Leonor Boldake and Michelle Piccoli in a cameo, but was produced by Joza copyright Miguel Cadilli instead of Paulo Branco. In the film, Silvera plays a wealthy woman who is determined to see a real apparition of the Virgin Mary with the help of Trapa, who has recently been released from prison. In 2006 Oliveira made Bell Taujos, a sequel to Luis Bua plus or minus Wells' 1967 film, Belle de Jure. The film stars Bulagia Rizar copyright Varin Sirizi and Michel Piccoli reprising his original role of Henri Hussain. In the film, Zar copyright Varin reluctantly agrees to see Henri for the first time in 40 years out of curiosity to know if her former blackmailer told her dying husband about her secret life as a prostitute. Ricardo Trapa and Leonor Boldek also appear in supporting roles. Oliveira's 2007 film Christopher Columbus, the Enigma was shot partly in New York and starred Ricardo Trapa. In 2009 Oliveira made Eccentricities of a Blonde-Haired Girl, based on a short story by A Section de Quira Cubes. The film starred Ricardo Trapa and Caterina Wallenstein, who won Best Actress at the 2009 Portuguese Golden Globe Awards. Oliveira's 2010 film The Strange Case of Angelica starred Spanish actress Pilar La Cubed Pes de Ayala and was entered into the Uncertain Regards section of the 2010 Cannes Film Festival. Oliveira's latest film, Jibo and the Shadow, was released in 2012 and premiered at the 69th Venice International Film Festival. The film stars Michael Lonsdale, Jeanne Moreau, Claudia Cardinale, Leonor Silvera, Ricardo Trapa and Luis Miguel Sintra and is based on the play The Hunchback and His Shadow by Raul Branda Pando. Manuel de Oliveira has said that he directs movies for the sheer pleasure of it, regardless of critical reaction. He maintains a quiet life away from the spotlights. Honors and decorations In 2008, Oliveira was awarded a doctorate degree honoris causa by the University of the Algarve. He has also been awarded the Order of St. James of the Sword by the President of Portugal. In addition, he has received multiple honors such as those of the Cannes, Venice and Montre Copyright L Film Festivals. He has been awarded two career Golden Lions, in 1985 and 2004, and a Golden Palm for his lifetime achievements in 2008. In 2002, Portuguese architect Eduardo Souto de Moura completed Cinema House in Porto, which was designed to commemorate the work of Oliveira. In November 2012 Oliveira was honored with a week-long tribute and retrospective at the 16th Cita Copyright Philo in Lille, France. In March 2013 Oliveira attended a screening of Enki Bar Cubed BA Cubed at the International Film Festival of Porto, which commemorated the 70th anniversary of the film. Personal Life Manuel de Oliveira married Maria Isabel Branda Pound o de Menezes de Alma de Carvel Hayes in Porto on December 4, 1940. They have four children, Manuel Casimiro Branda Pound o Carvel Hayes de Oliveira, José Manuel Branda Pound o Carvel Hayes de Oliveira, 
Maria Isabel Branda Pound O Carvel Hayes de Oliveira and Adelaide Maria Branda Pound O Carvel Hayes de Oliveira. He has several grandchildren through his daughter Adelaide, including the actors Jorge Trapa and Ricardo Trapa. In his younger days, Oliveira competed as a race car driver. During the 1937 Grand Prix season he competed in and won the International Estoril Circuit race, driving a Ford V8 Special. Manuel de Oliveira was chosen to give the welcoming speech at Pope Benedict XVI's meeting with representatives of the Portuguese cultural world on May 12, 2010 at the Bela Copyright M Cultural Center. In the speech, titled Religion and Art, he said that morality and art may well have derived from the religious attempt at an explanation of the existence of human beings with regard to their concrete insertion in the cosmos. The arts have always been strictly linked to religions, and Christianity has been prodigal in artistic expressions. In an interview published the day before, Oliveira, who was raised a Catholic, said that, doubts or not, the religious aspect of life has always accompanied me, and added, all my films are religious. In July 2012 Oliveira spent a week in hospital to treat a respiratory infection and congestive heart failure. He was formerly in pre-production on a film called A.I. Greja do Dibo in 2012. In November 2013 he stated his desire to shoot a film called The Old Man of Bellum in early 2014, pending government funding. Filmography, Features Documentaries and Shorts See also List of surviving silent film actors, references. Bibliographic references, Portuguese, OK do all hall by Josa Copyright de Matos Cruz, Portuguese Cinematheque, 1999, Manuel de Oliveira. Randall Johnson. University of Illinois Press. Contemporary Film Directors Series. 2007. Francesco Savri Onisio, Manuel de Oliveira. Cinema. Parola, Politica, Reco, Lamani, 2010, ISBN 1824-1417, External links, Manuel de Oliveira at All Movie, Manuel de Oliveira at the Internet Movie Database, Against the Grain, On the Cinematic Vision of Manuel de Oliveira, by Randall Johnson, Oliveira a Euro by Dennis Lim and others, Portugal a Euro unregistered trademark S Oliveira a Euro still making films at 100. By Euronews, interview on 100-year birthday by Euronews, 2010 Guardian article.